Hey, Dan and the talent. I'm hoping to do a study in my master's program on standardization in the tech space. Do you guys have any nuggets of wisdom on why it fails or succeeds when attempted? Thanks. Uh, there's that XKCD comic. Yeah, 14 standards, something like that. There's and too many standards. I'm going to make one that unifies them all. There are now too many standards plus one. Yeah, so that's a big part of it. And another big part of it is how fast technology moves. I mean... Humanity is awful in some ways, but it's also super amazing and inspiring in other ways. Incredibly and innovative. Yeah, innovation is one of the big ways that humanity is kind of the bee's knees, right? So when you, when you, when you build a standard based on the technology you have today and all the future ideas that you can imagine in this moment, th you're going to miss something. And there's going to be something new and cool that's going to come down the line or some new use case that you're going to try to develop for. A new innovation will come and then you're going to you're just ultimately going to need new standards. Um, and there's also just the the fact that one size generally doesn't fit all. I mean, I'd say a classic example of this that I've never quite been able to wrap my head around is why HDMI and DisplayPort have not merged at this point. But... They each do have capabilities that the other does not. And I'll also say that sometimes it does work. It's not just doom and gloom like we've been kind of saying here. Uh, like look at uh, some of the stuff that the EU has done with phones over the last little bit. It, things are happening. For example, did you know that while DisplayPort can generation for generation generally carry more video bandwidth, it cannot carry Ethernet, whereas HDMI can. But then HDMI's alt mode over USB type C did exist, but was basically abandoned. So it's just, uh, uh, okay, uh, I guess we need two kinds of cables. Uh, okay, fine. You know, right? Like Wouldn't it, it be nice if there was only one port on the back of the graphics card, though? No, because I would want to plug in multiple monitors. Oh, my God. I understood you. Yes, it would be convenient. I, I am. I'm actually sorry that that USB-C output that Nvidia did during the RTX 20 generation didn't take off. Especially now that we finally have a VR headset that exists that could actually use the bloody thing, the PSVR2. By the way, I think that community project to to make it PC compatible is is making at least some progress. I've seen I've seen rumblings of it, but that would be freaking awesome if you could just plug your VR headset takes power display it carries audio does freaking everything like usb-c that'd be really nice usb-c is that one standard to do everything the problem is that even usb-c is not one standard to rule them all because there are so many different subsets of it based on what's necessary for the particular implementation for example you can have a usb-c port on a phone that only carries usb 2.0 does no display port alt mode. It can only accept like, you know, five, five, uh, actually I don't know how many USB-C ports can only do five, five volt, two amp. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Cause pretty much every aspect of the standard is optional because if on that budget, you know, $120 smartphone, they had to implement the entire USB-C technology, like, uh, like optional technology list, it wouldn't be a $120 smartphone anymore. And it's not always necessary. Like on a gaming mouse, do you need it to run at USB 3 speeds? Yeah. No, obviously not. So why are we adding all of this extra cost for nothing, for literally no benefit to the consumer whatsoever? So it's tough, right? Like I, I don't have the answers. But you have a lot of people who think they have the answers, which is... How standards proliferate, the, the yeah. classic XKCD comic.